Welcome to Small Talk Daily for Wednesday, September 23rd, 2009. This morning I want to take a look at the system settings. To get there we go System, Settings, and this is settings that are appropriate both for Visual Works and to some extent for Object Studio. If you open up the launcher you can get there in Object Studio and it will affect things like the browser and the debugger and any other shared tools between the two. So let's take a look. User Interface Look. This is going to auto select by default. If I really want it to look like Windows XP, even though I'm on the Mac, I can hit apply. It's going to change this look there. Let's go back to auto select just to make that look kind of normal on this platform. And that changes that over. Next one down here, system. You probably don't need to screw around with this much. If your system doesn't find any parcels, what it really means is you need to set VisualWorks Home, which will take you here. And that'll really only happen if you've installed this manually instead of using the installer, in which case you may need to tell it where to find the root directory structure. Going down to loading, this is a bunch of command line option settings. If you don't want these available, for instance, you're scripting a runtime build, you might want to turn all or many of these off. Memory policy, this is something important to know a little bit about. This ceiling here for growth regime of 32 megs does not mean the system will stop growing at 32 megs. What it means is that at 32 meg there is a flip between preferring growth and preferring scavenging, which means every time the system needs memory past 32 megs, it'll try to scavenge first and only then grow. Most of the time you want to make that ceiling higher. I typically set that up to 64 or 100. Uh, the memory growth regime top here, this is kind of a hard limit past which it won't grow. You can change that to be bigger. I've set images as big as 2 gigabytes when I'm bringing a whole ton of data, for instance, log data from a website in. And this is just how much free memory it triggers off a scavenge with. So those two here are the ones you really want to be paying attention to. Message catalogs, unless you're working with internationalization, you don't need to worry too much about this. And even so, I typically leave this alone. Parcel path, again, if these are found, that's good. You don't really need to change this unless, again, you're scripting a runtime. You may want to empty that out. Printing. If you change this to host and apply it, that means it'll use host printing on Mac and Windows. Down here with source. This you can typically leave alone. We don't typically edit source code and files outside the image. The main purpose of modifying this is if you've loaded a contribution called Fileout 3.0, and that might be useful for either importing or exporting code between VisualWorks and Squeak or Dolphin or VA Smalltalk or some of the other Smalltalk systems out there. Not going to worry about that right now. Time zones, this should be set automatically. So for instance, if I type time now here and do a print it, you'll see that it picks up the time that my Mac tells me it is. That's picked up by the system. If you maybe are working with people in a different time zone, you want your clock inside VisualWorks to be matching their clock, maybe you should change this. But other than that, I leave this alone as well. Transcript, this you can modify for sending transcript rights to a file if you want to log all that stuff out. For instance, you're doing a lot of transcript logging and instead of looking at it in the window alone, maybe you want it out to a file for a later examination. That'll happen by default headless. If you don't want it happening headless, you can turn that off. Down here under tools, this is probably the most important one here, enable UI for internationalization. I'll show you what I mean with that. Let's go to Painter, New Canvas, and we'll go ahead and look at this settings thing here. Look up key and catalog. Notice how they're disabled. If I close the painter and then I turn that on, apply that. Now let's open up the painter again and you'll notice now that's enabled. So if you want to be able to set lookup keys and catalogs, you have to enable that option. If you do not enable that option, you won't be able to do that. Down here to browser, this is a bunch of settings for doing refactoring changes and showing toolbars, the default namespace, uh, the selector protocol order, if for some reason you've been around Smalltalk for a lot longer even than I have, and you don't like alphabetical, it's not traditional, go ahead and change that. The undo count, a couple days ago I showed you how to make the undo bigger than 5 in code. You can actually change that in a setting here. Auto categorization, this is a new thing in VisualWorks 7.7, and of course Object Studio 8.2. If you don't want that on for any of your existing code, change it to only new methods, that's the default. You can always have it to always, in which case it'll start auto-categorizing any change you make to any method in the system. Kind of up to you the way you want that. So let's go down to debugger. The debugger you want to change. This one is the only one you really want to work with. Use event faithful debugging. That's especially useful if you're working with multiple small talk threads. The formatter, you can change the way this works. The most obvious ones you want to change is these two. Browse auto formats, meaning 
when you browse code, auto format it, but it doesn't save it in that form. So if you're working with a larger team and you don't like the way two or three people on your team format code, but you don't want to get into the great formatting war of 2009, you can just have it auto format for you. You can look at it in nice consistent format, let the other guys do what they want. If on the other hand you want to get into that format war, save auto formats. Anytime you save, it'll auto format it for you. UI Painter. Uh, the most important one here is probably avoiding installation dialog when possible and auto install when defining. That'll get rid of a lot of the prompts that pop up when you start installing your UIs. I usually turn all three of these on. The warnings. These two are on by default. Let me show you what this does. I'll open up a browser and I will go ahead and create a new package called foo. And now notice my foo package has a little warning symbol on it because I don't have a comment. If I don't want to be nagged that way, I can turn that off. Down here for workspace, finally, you can silently declare workspace, turn that off if you don't want your variables silently declared. Probably a mistake. I typically leave that on. It's really useful for scripting. Finally, one that needs a little bit of explanation down here under URI. This looks like it means auto load from the internet. It's not what it means. All it really means is that if you use URIs in code and that code isn't loaded, it'll go ahead and try to auto load the FTP parcel, the HTTP parcel, or the HTTPS parcel for you if you check these. If you don't check them, you have to load that by hand or set prereqs in your loading. Not all that useful to my mind, but it's there. And that's pretty much a quick walk through the settings that you really need to know something about. That's about it for today. Until next time, have fun with small talk.